I'll now call upon Councillor Govindia to move Executive Report Number 2. Do we have the page numbers? I'll continue and we'll get it. So I, I call upon Councillor Govindia or a stand-in to move... Ex By earlier request, Councillors Osborne and Cook may speak for up to... 10 minutes on each paragraph, uh, 10 minutes each on paragraph 11. So, Environment, Culture and Community Safety, OEC, Councillor Cook. And before you start, sorry, it's page 247. Okay. People like living in Wandsworth for lots of different reasons. We've got marvellous green spaces, good transport links to central London and great schools. We've also got a flagship Conservative Council, renowned for having the lowest council tax in the country, combined with superbly run local services. Estate agents routinely point out to prospective customers the stark difference in levels of council tax between us and our neighbouring boroughs. The lowest council tax in the country hasn't come about by chance. It's come about because for over 30 years, a Conservative administration has done all it can to... I Sorry, I didn't hear. So... Uh, Councillor, Gailey, Councillor Daly would like to intervene. Yes, but that's of course, up to Councillor Daly. It hasn't come about by chance. It is due to the local government subsidy and the disproportionate grant that this council gets. It isn't due to the policies of this Wandsworth Council. Thank you. Listen and learn is all I would say. <laughs> the lowest council tax in the country hasn't come about by chance. <laughs> it's, sorry, I forgot where I was. It's come about because for over 30 years, a Conservative administration has done all it can to make sure a, every penny of taxpayers' money is spent carefully and wisely. We've never bought into the philosophy that you should borrow, tax highly, and spend as much as possible to provide public services. Well, do you think, it's only 300 words, maybe I could finish it. <laughs> No, she's got 10 minutes later to chat. <laughs> you must be confusing me with the other councillor, Kim. Sorry. On the contrary, we know that keeping the council tax as low as we can helps our residents, never more important than in difficult times. A central plank of ensuring that we get the best value has been a continuous process of competitively tendering services. We started in 1978 identifying services for which there was an external market. The annual savings this process has racked up has now reached £61.5 million. That's annually. If we'd kept to the old debt ways of doing things, there would be an extra £480 on Ban D council tax every year. Once we sign the contract for the Library and Heritage Service, we can expect this annual saving to be even greater. Our libraries... 480 pounds a year on a band D property. No, it's 61.5 million pounds a year on all the competitive tendering. Every year it racks, has racked up. Our libraries are well used. There's a good selection of books, computers, newspapers, plenty of tables for students to study at and helpful and friendly staff. There are children's libraries, home delivery service, computer and other classes, book clubs, children's activities, holiday reading schemes, and much more. They're regularly refurbished and modernized. The new contract, when finalized, ensures that the libraries will continue to operate as they are now, with no reductions in service. All the staff will be subject to GP transfer. The big difference is that the cost of running our libraries will be substantially less. I hope that all members of the Council will join me in congratulating the officers for their imaginative thinking and meticulous attention to detail, which has led to yet another contract which represents excellent value for money for local taxpayers. ...of Conservative <laughs> councillors, now that your colleagues have all left the chamber, for a debate which, for a debate which you... For a debate which you chose, you wanted on the agenda, it will uh, echo some elements of 
farce and pantomime, I have to say, uh, during the course of the uh, progress of this paragraph. Let me give you some examples of what's happened over the last few months with regard to this. Um, first of all, let me say that we are supporting the paragraph. Um, but secondly, to say that you have to understand uh, it is in the nature of the opposition that um, we are quick to oppose. Uh, we are just as quick to support something when we think it's a good idea, but that support is never unconditional, and from time to time we have misgivings, and we like to express them. And right at the very beginning of this business, we did express some misgivings about what was happening uh, in this case. Now, before I'm accused of making a rookie mistake, um, I am well aware that if you have joint procuring, that is not the same as joint contracting. But I have to say, given the history of the London boroughs, um, usually joint procuring leads to joint contracting. Not always, of course, but usually. And the reason is, it's a bit of history about the London boroughs, when the London boroughs were created in the 1960s, everybody said, oh dear, they're too big, too impersonal, there are some fringe localities that get left out. Actually, we've reached a stage now in 2012 when everybody says, oh dear, the London boroughs are a bit too small. And so, if they want power when they're procuring, they have to band together into bigger units so they can get a better deal. And indeed, there are some contractors who say, well, we're not going to work for just one council. That's not a big enough deal for us. We will only work for two or three councils. So I think the man on the Clapham omnibus can be forgiven for thinking that when a council goes into joint procuring, there's a strong likelihood it's going to end up in joint contracting. In this case, it didn't. We went through the whole joint procuring process. It was all a little bit of a pantomime. How appropriate at this time of the year, as we come up to Christmas. Um, one of our misgivings, very straightforwardly, was who we were in partnership with in this process. We grew increasingly concerned about the partnership with Croydon Council. Now, I suspect that both councillors and officers were also increasingly concerned about the nature of that partnership, but that never came to the surface. Indeed, when we raised it here in this council meeting, and uh, suggested that it wasn't a brilliant partnership, the leader of the council said that the partnership with Croydon was a, I remember it very well, a good fit. We said, in part of this pantomime, we said, oh no it isn't. And the councillor said, oh yes it is. And we came back and forth into this council chamber repeating that over and over again. And the council leader, when... Uh, we finally uh, got to the end of the process in this panto. Uh, he played, I, I pay a compliment, season of goodwill, a compliment to our council leader um, with his usual aplomb. It's a pity he's not here to receive it, but never mind. Um, with his usual aplomb and his dignity, he played the perfect part of Baron Hardup in a pantomime, saying this joint procurement process has saved us a lot of money. Approximately... £60,000 uh, in the overall turnover of this council has been saved by, uh, I think, in legal fees by going in with Croydon. And uh, there was absolutely no cost incurred in going into partnership with Croydon. None at all. I know because I asked at the committee meeting if there was any cost and was categorically told there wasn't any as a result of the partnership. Although I have to say that in Croydon, they are estimating that it cost them £350,000. I guess they're right. They may be wrong. I don't know. But uh, who cares about Croydon anymore? They're not part of the pantomime anymore. Um, but woe betide this council if we ever find out that there were costs incurred as a part of this process. Anyway, £60,000 saved, and I suppose, uh, in deference to Baron Hardup, every little bit helps. And so the pantomime went on. When we got to committee, we were constantly told that everything was going swimmingly, everything was fine, everything was getting better and better all the time. Councillor Clay, chair of the committee, let me pay a compliment to her as well. 
her, I, I freely recognize on this side of the chamber her graciousness and her eloquence in arguing for this, uh, this project. Um, and I suppose, in a pantomime metaphor, playing the perfect part of the principal boy in a pantomime. Uh, always played by a woman, of course. Um, always upbeat, always positive, that character. You'll remember, cheering up Cinderella. I, I once saw, I've, I remember very clearly, I once saw um, Maureen Lipman, the, ga the great actress, uh, deliver a line for, uh, 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 on behalf of uh, this upbeat character in the pantomime. Uh, when something like, um, I do believe Cinderella, the prince's balls get bigger every year. And uh, Councillor Clay, by, you know, sim in a similar way, constantly arguing that everything was uh, getting better uh, as we went along. Um, her deputy chair, Councillor Hallmark, uh, crucial but cameo role, um, came in, let's see, supporting her, uh, started as a mouse, magically transformed into a coachman, uh, and then at the stroke of midnight, back to a mouse again, but made a crucial uh, piece of, gave a crucial piece of support. Um, what would be a good uh, line for a coachman in a pantomime? How about something like, I had that Councillor Morritt in the back of my cab the other day. Oh, well, didn't we all? <laughs> and finally, when we get to the committee, <laughs> when we get to the committee where the decision is taken, I, I commend the ca cabinet member responsible with his uh, imposing figure and his stentorian voice playing the perfect part of a genie. When we get to the uh, committee meeting where the decision has to be taken, uh, I saw Frank Bruno do this once, I think, if I remember rightly, and it went something like, I, uh, I, I am the genie of the lamp, one rub and I come straight away, or something like that, which, whatever that means, um, uh, uh, to the front of the stage. And Councillor Cook, <coughs> sorry, but we, I've lost the, when I we came, understand. when we came to Has the he final, ever borrowed a book from a library to get his stories right. <laughs> so Councillor Cook comes centre stage as the genie of the lamp, and says, utters the magic words to allay our misgivings about the partnership with Croydon. He says. He utters the magic words, joint procuring is not the same as joint contracting. And Croydon went one way, and we went the other, and with one mighty bound, Wandsworth Council was free from its relationship with Croydon Council. I have to say, by the way, the decision they took in Croydon has gone to committee again this evening. They've challenged it. A mixture of Conservative and Labour councillors have challenged their decision. It's gone for extra scrutiny. But again, who cares about what happens in Croydon now? Uh, they're not part of our setup. The uh, council is free, and everybody in Wandsworth Council, in supporting this paragraph as it goes through, will live happily for about eight years until the contract comes up for renewal. Merry Christmas, Mr. Mayor. Follow that. Uh, back in the uh, real world. This council has a long-standing policy of providing excellent services at lowest possible cost. The idea of value for money is important, not just because it's the taxpayers that pay for services. I have news for the party opposite. Money doesn't just appear from nowhere. It doesn't come out of thin air and it doesn't go on trees. It is right that we as a council are careful with taxpayers' money. It's their hard-earned money. The review of the library services in the borough builds on the council's reputation for prudent finances. But clever bit, and this is clever, we will end up with a service that's as good, if not better, than what we've got at the moment. Commercial confidentiality 
means that I can't say too much about the contract, but council taxpayers will be pleased with the deal they've got. Mr Mayor, the tender for library services started about a year ago. Uh, a great deal has been made of the 80%, 20% split, that is price versus quality. But members need to remember that over the past 12 months, the number of bidders has been reduced from 7 to 3 on quality grounds. In effect, over the past year, uh, the number of bidders has been filtered down to um, so the final three bidders offer the best value. Now, I'm pleased that Councillor Osborne has finally accepted that we jointly procured and didn't jointly appoint. Uh, he was rather confused about that at committee. The reason we did jointly procure was basically did save us money. As Councillor Osborne admitted, it saved us £60,000. Now, £60,000 might not sound like a lot of money, but when every penny counts, it has to be the right thing to do to try and save money for the taxpayer of this borough. Also, this council benefited from working with uh, Gordon Council. We set up a joint board to evaluate the bids. We shared our knowledge. Never has the phrase, two heads are better than one, been more true. Our committee, the leader of the opposition, also raised concern about the eight-year contract period. There are lots of examples within this town hall of long contracts, most notably uh, rubbish collection, ledge centres. I fully accept the point about technology and the fact that technology will move on in the next eight years, but surely the bidders will have factored that into their final submissions. I also understand that the eight-year period emerged over the previous 12 months and that officers negotiated that with the tenderers. Uh, I'm sure if there were concerns from the officers, they would have uh, shouted by now. Finally, in addition, anything less than eight years would uh, delay the payback period and mean that the bid becomes unworkable for the bidders. Mr Mayor, councils across London and the UK are closing libraries left, right and centre. 10% of libraries in the UK have been closed in recent years. The party opposite might not be totally happy with our direction of travel, but I ask them quite simply, how many libraries has this borough closed recently? The answer is none, because we see the value of the libraries and we know that people like them. That's why we ran a successful competitive tendering exercise that may well result in a better uh, service. Mr Mayor, to uh, carry on Councillor Osborne's pantomime analogy, we could very well have the goose that laid the golden egg. <laughs> No, I am going to get a microphone after all. Uh, Mr Mayor, fellow councillors, um, it's interesting, there seems to be a little bit of an attempt to do a bit of rewriting of history and some of the things that happened in the committee. 
which I would just refresh everybody's uh, memories, is actually called an Overview and Scrutiny Committee. And my understanding of both the words overview and scrutiny is that it is perfectly proper for all councillors within that committee, which includes the chair and the deputy chair of that committee, to scrutinise proposals that are being brought forward to ensure that we do end up with the best possible service. Now, perhaps Councillor Hallmark wasn't a member of the committee when we start kicked off the, the library um, potential outsourcing or re procurement of the service, but both Councillor Boswell and I, who were the members of the committee from this side of the council, voted in favour of that process. So don't try and put words into our mouth to suggest that we were against looking at market testing of the service. Councillor Clay seemed to have forgotten that as well. Perhaps she also was not a member of the committee. I hesitate to go back into all the pantomime stuff that uh, Councillor Osborne was referring to earlier. So, uh, in fact, I think I won't, um, as we seem to be skating over some very thin <laughs> double entendre ice. Can I interrupt? No, I'm couldn't. afraid I've only got five. <laughs> I haven't asked for an, a point of personal an explanation. No, I'm not interested in your I, point of personal I, explanation. I have not. I'm in the middle of making my speech. La ladies. <laughs> I have not. Could, 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 could I just ask, <laughs> Councillor Mrs. Clay, what oh, is yes, your point of personal explanation? I, I have not accused you of not being in favour of anything. Oh, good. Right. May I carry on? I love it when two ladies agree. Let's oh, carry on. Per perhaps you could instruct you asking it. We did ask questions about the joint procurement, of course. In fact, I also asked within the committee uh, whether or not we could um, have an amendment to say that if somebody else came forward from another borough, that they could also be a potential partner as well. And actually, you agreed with that proposal that I made. So it's not that we're against joint procurement. We did have some concerns about Croydon. Um, because we had heard some not terribly good things about the state of the physical state of some of the libraries, which I think is, is probably an ongoing issue. But, as Councillor Osborne said, that is now a matter for Croydon. We no, no longer need to worry about that. So I think it's quite right that we should be asking these questions. And what have we now ended up with? Procuring an external relationship with a new contractor. And it is something that we have to enter into with a great deal of seriousness. We have got a number of contracts that are about the same length as this one, about eight years. But in the first instances, when we first started in this council outsourcing, not many of the contracts run for that length of time. Now, this is an unusual contract. There are not yet that many councils that are contracting to have somebody else manage their library service. So who have we chosen? Well, we've gone out and we looked at a long list of uh, potential candidates from the private sector, from the public sector, an in-house bid was put in, and also from the social enterprise sector. And after we've gone through everything, we've ended up with Greenwich Le Le Ledger Limited. Greenwich Ledger Limited to run our libraries. Well, if you look them up, they're on Wikipedia, and they're described as a non-profit distributing cooperative that runs over 100 leisure and fitness facilities in uh, a number of London boroughs, Reading, and so on and so forth. They also run the Crystal Palace National Sports Centre. And they have also got the contract for running the Olympic Aquatics and Multi-Use Arena. They're a staff-led trust, an industrial and provident society, and uh, members of the cooperative are company owners, and they are the same as the staff. They don't quite describe themselves as a workers' cooperative. I can't think why, because they are in that in all, all but name. Their board includes elected members of the staff uh, and, other, and other people, including, uh, I'm delighted to say, trade unions. And indeed, the majority of the people on the board are elected by the staff. If you look on Greenwich Leisure Limited's own website, their slogan is a charitable social enterprise for all the community. And a sub slogan is, and it's about more than just the money. Well, it's a shame that uh, Councillor Clay didn't bother to look at that before she made all her comments about money saving and saving and saving. They describe it as better business, better service, better people, better communities. A social enterprise trading for people and planet, a charity that reinvests their profits with social values which are as important as financial performance, owned by staff, 
who have non-dividend distributing shares, who elect the board. Who would ever have thought that Wandsworth Council would enter into a contract with a company that describes itself as a social enterprise that wants to buy fair trade goods and services? And I am delighted that we're entering into a contract with Greenwich Leisure Limited set up by our Labour colleagues in Greenwich. And may we find many other companies of a similar nature to outsource things to. Thank you. An extremely good news uh, story. Unlike some uh, Labour uh, boroughs, we are not, uh, we're not closing any libraries. Uh, some Labour boroughs, of course, have closed libraries, know almost about it. They have closed them. Um, we're doing quite the reverse. We're developing new ways of delivering library services. Uh, we're making savings and all this at a time of extraordinary change in how people uh, get access and use information. And rather than simply trying to maintain the status quo, uh, we are moving things forward and making the very most of the future of libraries. Um, I'd like to pause, about, if I may, just at this point and talk about uh, the person who drove this process, Peter Robinson, who uh, retired from this council last Friday after 42 years service. Uh, and he was involved in some absolutely seminal uh, contracting out, uh, waste management, leisure services, which are still almost unique in the country in generating huge revenues for this council uh, and then he went out with libraries. Uh, what a career and we're very grateful to him for everything that he did. Um, but all of that positive uh, energy, uh, you wouldn't get any of a sense of that listening to the party opposite. Um, they really just cannot bring themselves to acknowledge that this is another very significant success for the borough. Um, we are amongst the first in the country to outsource libraries and we are the first uh, to attempt a joint procurement process process uh, with another council. Um, they of course got themselves in a bit of a pickle from the start. Um, to the surprise of many of us, they didn't object uh, last September at committee uh, and perhaps inevitably they've therefore been scratching around ever since to come up with any sort of coherent uh, uh, critique and I think uh, the pantomime we've seen tonight uh, just underlines that. Um, Councillor Cooper also uh, has, uh, and I, I do welcome her, her, her very full support, uh, that, is, that is welcome, uh, but uh, she's also been scratching around, if I may say so. Um, last week's Guardian, she was quoted as saying that uh, not-for-profit organisation was clearly the way to go, and uh, she could have told her that, that and uh, that we really needn't have bothered with uh, the expensive uh, process we've just been through. I'll leave aside the expense bit because I really don't uh, accept that, um, but Councillor Cooper completely misses the point. Um, the whole point about competitive tendering is that it's precisely that. Uh, it's a competition. If uh, Councillor Cooper had been involved in running the Olympics, all of that running, cycling, jumping, rowing, whatever, uh, wouldn't have been necessary. Um, the whole thing could have been dealt with in a morning uh, and she would have uh, decided uh, who the winners were by picking them herself. The whole point, the whole point about a competition is that it drives individuals and organizations to innovate and achieve their best. And that is why it is so successful and it has worked for the last 30 years for this council. Um, as regards who is the preferred bidder, uh, we have absolutely no agenda as to whether it's a private company, a social enterprise, staff mutual, that doesn't matter. If they can do the job, then that's the thing that matters and of course the price at the end. Um, Councillor Osborne's pantomime, um, Fixated by the process, I have to say, um, I've been fascinated to watch, the, watch this. The, uh, the difference between uh, uh, procurement and uh, tendering and procurement does seem to have caused uh, a, little, uh, a little difficulty. And we were last, uh, at the last committee meeting, we were accused of having been lucky to get away with being able to make uh, a, a, an independent contract award. Um, Again, completely misses, misses the point. Um, Councillor Hallmark uh, made it perfectly clear joint tendering does not necessarily lead to joint procurement. Uh, and all parties have understood right from the outset that this was a matter of exploring all options and if there were additional savings to be had by doing things together, uh, then that would be terrific. We'd take them. If not, and if it didn't work, uh, then equally that was just fine. And presumably, being logical about it, uh, if the party opposite have concerns about Croydon, they're presumably very pleased by the outcome that we're not doing it with Croydon. Uh, so if you follow the logic, you can't have it both ways. Um, but such is the confusion on the Labour benches that uh, I really do suspect we'll need to open a new section of political history uh, in our libraries. Um, something along the lines of a fantasy genre, um, all, all to catalogue the Labour approach to this process, because it really has been quite, uh, quite extraordinary. Uh, while we're at it, uh, Councillor Belton might like to uh, stop off in the economics section, because uh, I think he might, uh, might learn something there. Um, <laughs> 
but, uh, <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> the length of contract, uh, I know, is an issue for some people. It's a perfectly reasonable question, uh, but we have many contracts that are eight years um, or longer, uh, and we look very carefully at what the market um, was telling us. Uh, the feeling um, from potential bidders was that they wanted something longer, um, so we brought it down shorter, and I think we have got it about right. Uh, if we had gone much shorter than eight years, it would definitely have cost us more, and if we'd come down to something like, say, four years, we simply wouldn't have had any, any bidders, uh, which would have all been a bit pointless, wouldn't it? Um, but fundamentally, the fact that we have such high levels of interest from high quality bidders, uh, and diverse bidders as well, I think demonstrates that they believe, like me, that libraries have a strong future. If they had any doubts about the future of libraries, they wouldn't have been in the bidding process. And when it comes to the cost of the whole process, uh, the, the final stage bidders have obviously put in huge sums of money uh, to get themselves into the game and keep themselves there. Um, so adapting to change is what this is all about. Um, we have already innovated at York's Gardens Library. We've, we've mentioned that already with a new community group. I was there just last week accepting a chap uh, from Lloyds Bank, which was uh, a tremendous example of what community engagement can do uh, in developing a library. And I do look forward to discussing that theme uh, with the preferred bidder uh, when I'm able to do so. So in conclusion, one of London's best library and heritage services is about to get even better. Uh, with Wandsworth leading the way in how we develop libraries in the 21st century. I'm going to have to stop saying that uh, soon. Um, and at a time when libraries are in crisis in many local authorities, we are keeping ours fully open and we've made a significant saving and secured an excellent provider and I've absolutely no hesitation in uh, commending these new arrangements uh, to the Council. We receive paragraph 11 as information. Uh, is that agreed? Thank you.